Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're doing this mini roundup review where I have a few items that I wanna talk about. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee, let's take a sip and let's get started. For those of you who are new to my channel, I'm a makeup artist as well as esthetician and I now offer this one-on-one -on -one beauty consulting service. So this is where you and I chat virtually one-on-one -on -one about any and all beauty questions or concerns that you might have. So if you want to make an appointment, click the link in the description box down below. So for today's video, we're going to talk about a mascara, a nail polish, and a perfume. I will include timestamps down below if you're only here for certain categories. All right, let's dig into it. So the first item I want to talk about is from Chantecaille, and this is the Faux Sin Longest Lash Mascara. This is a sample here, but I think it's a very good representative of the actual product. So on the Chantecaille website, this retails at $72 US plus tax, so it's definitely a very luxury mascara. The description goes, the newest lash peptide technology has now been added to the original sought after faux sil formula. So this is supposed to have a skincare or some sort of lash peptide to help your lashes. This powerful lash peptide helps enhance the appearance of natural lash length thickness and fullness. The formula features the non-clumping double helix brush to comb and feather lashes for a defined volume. So I'm seeing a lot of words like volume, fullness, thickness. Those are all words that I like in my mascara. There's also supposed to be a bit of rose oil for conditioning the lashes. So let's go ahead and just do an application here with you. Now with all mascaras, when you apply it, make sure to wiggle and roll your wand through here. Don't just go like this, really roll your wand upwards to coat all of your lashes. So here is the difference. Clearly, there's a huge difference with mascara and no mascara. I think mascara is one of my all-time favorite makeups. It's just, or makeup items, it just really transforms your whole face. Now that you can see the extreme difference, let's go ahead and do the other side. That's much better. I recognize myself a whole lot more with tons of mascara. This claims to be lengthening, volumizing, etc. I think it is a really good mascara. I think if you want volume, if you want length, if you just want a bit more density in your lashes, it's very good. The only kind of ick is the price tag and also the claim that this is supposed to have peptides to enhance the appearance of natural lash length. I don't know. I mean, I think that this is a really good mascara, but I also think that it's really dupable with the volume de chanel that is like my all-time favorite i'm trying to see if i have it here yeah i do i have multiples of them um but the volume de chanel to me adds volume length drama etc and i kind of feel like this does the exact same thing except this is more expensive and this claims to have some sort of like skincare benefits personally I'm not seeing it after a couple of weeks. Maybe if you use it for months, you know, just buy a new one every couple of months and maybe you'll see a difference, but I'm not noticing that. I think if you're someone who has issues with perhaps lash density, if you've lost a lot of lashes, if your lashes are thinning, maybe you do look for products that are supposed to help nourish the lashes as well as add makeup. But I think for me, as a makeup fanatic, it was only a matter of time before I either got my hands on a sample or tried the mascara itself. And it's a really good product. Like, listen, look at my lashes. This is clearly a good mascara. I just think that you can get the same effect with the Volume de Chanel, in my personal opinion. The wand itself is really nice. It's really fluffy. It's big. 
it coats the lashes, it curls them, it adds volume, it adds density, it gives my lashes fake lash effect but with mascara. So let us know in the comments if you use this Chantecai mascara because I know there are some people who swear by it so maybe it's sort of like a mascara slash treatment, it's a bit of an investment, perhaps you just have to use it for month after month, let us know in the comments. Now moving on to something from Dior. This is part of their holiday collection. Their holiday collection this year is called Golden Nights and this here is their nail polish. This is called Dark Nights and this retails at 29 US plus tax. I do not currently have this on my fingertips so I will go ahead and use some scotch tape and swatch it on the back of my hand. This is described as a deep burgundy but if you look closely, it sometimes looks a little bit purple, a little bit red, and there's this beautiful little golden shift inside that just kind of lifts it up and makes it very mysterious. This is their holiday packaging. I absolutely love this. I've bought their holiday nail no polishes now for several years in a row. To me, this reminds me of a Christmas tree ornament. It's so decadent, it's so luxurious and extra. And in my experience, these nail polishes for the holiday collections always last a long time. I'm going to include a video clip of a wear test. This is after seven days of wear. And after seven days, this manicure still looked really good. I think I had maybe one or two chips, very, very small ones on my index fingers, but they were very small and not very noticeable. I think you could get away with wearing this for probably nine or 10 days, depending on what you do. Like I cook, I clean, I live my life, etc. But for seven days, this looked quite immaculate, especially for a really dark color, because as we all know, with the dark color, as soon as it chips, it's so noticeable. But with this, the chips were so light and so faint that you could definitely stretch this for like a week and a half if you wanted to. I have a category of nail polishes that I call travel worthy, and like hopefully, God willing, in the future, we all get to travel. And I love these types of colors that will last me one solid week and stretch it out to a little bit longer. That way you don't have to do your manicure when you're on a beach vacation or something. So to me, this nail polish, Dark Nights, is absolutely worth it. Yes, it's luxury. Yes, it's expensive. But the packaging is beautiful and the wear is magnificent. I think that this is totally worth getting if you're on the fence, if you're thinking of getting it, it's worth getting. So just as a comparison, I'm going to do some swatches on the back of my hand and compare the Dior Dark Nights with the Chanel Vamp as well as the Chanel Rouge Noir. These are just some colors that I have that are comparable to Dark Nights. So if you have Rouge Noir or Vamp, you can compare along with me. So I think Vamp is a bit more red and a little bit more brown. It has that nice shift along with Dark Nights, but when you compare them, you can really see the plumminess of dark nights and then rouge noir just looks like a really dark red wine almost blood color compared to dark nights you know dark nights really looks nice and plummy compared to both of these okay and last but not least we have here the tom ford bitter peach this is an eau de parfum it just came out and it's actually unisex it's both for men and women let's go ahead and spritz this and talk about it so this came out in October of 2020 this year and when you smell it, when it's still wet, you get a whiff of patchouli. That's sort of the first thing that I notice when it's still wet on my skin. Um, I was very lucky to get a sample here. This is not the official Tom Ford sample, but someone at Holt Renfrew decantered a sample for me. Now I only see one format available here. It's the 50 milliliter bottle and it retails at 350 US plus tax. So it's Tom Ford, it's luxury. It comes with the Tom Ford luxury price tag. Now when it starts to dry down a bit, you do get this peach scent. It reminds me of the fuzz 
on a peach, you know, like a nice ripe, juicy peach, that little fuzzy peach <laughs> texture on top. It sort of has a scent and this is what it reminds me of. But it also is a little bit woody. It's not necessarily an overly sweet perfume. I thought that this would be almost in the Terry Mugler Angel category, just from the name Bitter Peach and also from Tom Ford. Some perfumes are very, you know, very strong. And so I thought that this Bitter Peach would actually be much sweeter than it actually is. This also smells a bit spicy, but a very warm, soft, spicy. It's not too much of an oriental perfume. It's very soft and like maybe a hint of balsamic, but it's it's very faint. You smell also, I think, blood orange. It is fruity, but it's not as fruity as I expected. I thought maybe they would add raspberry to it. I'm not sure why. I think I like raspberry in perfumes and that tends to make it fruity and a little bit sweet, but not like a saccharine sweet. But there definitely is no raspberry. I think there's maybe a little bit of vanilla and tonka bean, which normally gives it that really gourmand, decadent, scent but it's not really there in this perfume like you can smell the vanilla and the tonka bean but it doesn't make it that really decadent voluptuous scent in my opinion i think what's the most interesting is that you can also detect some rum and some cognac which gives it a nice mysterious sexy finish it doesn't smell like alcohol but just that sort of rich, deep, dark taste you get from a nice cognac or a nice rum. I think that's maybe where a little bit of that warm spiciness comes from. I can kind of see how this could be a unisex perfume. Normally, I don't like unisex fragrances on myself. I like to be very feminine and very girly, so it's not usually for me. But I could see how this could be unisex. So one thing that confuses me about this perfume is the launch date. So this came out in October. Now, I know some people follow very strict rules about wearing certain perfumes during certain seasons and some people just wear whatever they want. I kind of do a bit of both every time a new season begins. So once it started getting a bit colder out, I pulled out my Dior Dior Addict and Lancôme La Vie est Belle and like the more gourmand perfumes and then after a few weeks I just go back to my regular rotation of whatever is my favorite at the moment. But to me, this perfume does not scream fall or winter fragrance. To me, those are the heavier, more gourmand, more sweeter perfumes, just in my opinion. This to me is a really nice daytime perfume. You could wear this at the office, you could wear this every day, it could be your signature scent, but it does not scream fall winter to me, in my opinion. I like this fragrance, I'm really happy and grateful that I got a sample, but I am not feeling compelled to dish out 350 US for a 50 milliliter. I mean, sometimes you fall in love with a perfume and you're willing to spend whatever it, you know, whatever it costs to buy it. But this one here, I don't feel that compulsion. I almost think this perfume is too well balanced, which is a weird criticism. But with a name like Bitter Peach, I almost expected the peach to be more prominent. I almost wanted this to have, I don't know, more more peach, more cognac, more rum, more of something. I feel like there's something missing. I don't know, like for a Tom Ford fragrance, I just wanted one note in particular to stand out more. And it could just be my pH. Like two people can wear the exact same perfume and it can smell completely different on different people. And so for me, I just, I don't know. I smell the peach, but it's not enough. Like I really wanted like, peach to be like the the main thing wafting from me with this perfume i think i went into this expecting a new black orchid which i also know is a unisex perfume and i don't usually like that but this 
black orchid I love and for me black orchid is that punch that very present almost like domineering fragrance and I just sort of expected bitter peach to be in that same vein but that is just me and my opinion so let me know down in the comments if you've tried this Tom Ford fragrance I know that there are Tom Ford fanatics out there and you've probably already bought this perfume if you're just a collector but let me know down in the comments what you think of this new fragrance is it what you expected is it what you wanted let us know and also let me know what you think of the Chantecai mascara as well as the Dior nail polish all right I think this about does it for today's video make sure that you leave a comment leave a like or that you are subscribed to my channel because I know so many of you who watch me are not subscribed and anytime you engage with my channel it really helps me out because the YouTube algorithm just sees that as engagement and will send more people my way so please make sure you are subscribed all right guys I think this is it for today's video Thank you all so much for stopping by. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.